Well, praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert of Bethel Deliverance International Church, and this is The Christian and the Culture. We want to take a hard look at how you, the believer in Jesus Christ, should live in this current world. We are confronted by many challenges, tests, and trials that come from our adversary and from our culture as well. But the Word of God gives us all answers for how to deal with every problem that comes into your life. Joining me as always are my two co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, and Pastor Tim Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast in Philadelphia. Gentlemen, greet our audience. God bless you, Christian and Culture family. As always, we have an exciting topic, and we can't wait to get to it. God bless you. Hey, Christian and the Culture family, welcome again. As we always say, uh, we're excited for you to be here, and uh, let's see what the Lord has to say today. <laughs> <laughs> or at least what Lord. we have to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope it's him talking yeah, to yeah, us. Yeah, we sure do. <laughs> but you know, uh, the Bible teaches that all who live godly shall suffer persecution. Yeah. And we've avoided this uh, topic for a while because of the constant political discussion mm -hmm. that says that because the Democrats are in power, the church was going to experience persecution. And it almost seemed like it was being used as a requirement to vote for the other party so that we can escape persecution. Right. But Jesus says that if you live in this world and you belong to the family of God, you will suffer persecution. Now, we would like to look at the Word of God to share with you what that means. How should you prepare for persecution? Can it be avoided? And what does God ultimately expect from our times of persecution? We're going to ask our question to Pastor Brian Weatherspoon first, and we would like to ask him, how do you prepare for the coming persecution? Uh, Bishop, uh, you know, that one, thank you for asking the question, Bishop. And uh, I, I'm not so sure if you ever prepare for persecution, mm. uh, at least given the historical backdrop of persecution uh, from Nero to Domitian to Trajan. There's, there's, there's are several guys that were just horrible towards Christians. And I'm not sure the Christians were prepared, although I believe they were prayed up. Mm -hmm. I, I believe they lived extremely holy lives. And, and one thing I believe they had that we don't have is they were very much sold out. Mm. They, they were willing to go all the way. And that made the Christian not only uh, a target, but it also made them a PowerPoint. They were powerful individuals. And so uh, I think prayer is going to do it. If I was to start, prayer is my favorite key. Uh, prayer has got to be there because prayer has to center you. Uh, some, sometimes you can do a knowledge of what it was before. I do believe history tries to repeat itself. And so what they did then may come back around again. So I think this also has to be a mental preparation. The, the bottom line is you must be sold out to Jesus Christ. Mm. And when and if a persecution comes, you'll be ready because you belong to him. Okay. Amen. Pastor Tim, we see in the word of God, there were many things done to children of God. And then yes. through history, as Pastor Brian mm. mentioned, particularly in the first century yeah. with the Christian, all the way up mm. to around 3, 313, That's right. 311, uh, the church went through great trials. Yes. How do you see that working out today in the 21st century? Living in America, let's take America, uh, a republic with laws, constitutional mm -hmm. rights. Do we see that there is persecution on the horizon and how? Mm -hmm. uh, that's an interesting question, Bishop. I read something back in January where it says 13 Christians die every day uh, because of their faith. Mm -hmm and it lists some of the places that they're dying and being persecuted, none in the United States. And so, so the United States ha hasn't experienced, have not experienced uh, persecution. And I'm not so sure that we, we, we can see it on the horizon. We are seeing inconveniences. Uh, we are seeing uh, those kinds of things, but I'm not sure 
Um, if we can see it on our immediate horizon, I do believe that at some point it will happen, but the church is not being persecuted. We have no clue in the Western culture uh, what persecution really is. Uh, I think, again, we're more inconvenienced than anything when the pandemic hit and churches were shutting down. People were saying, you know, we're being persecuted and the government is shutting us down. The church never stopped being the church. The church kept moving in a different way, um, but I'm not sure if we can really see it on the horizon. I do believe it's coming. I do believe that because because the Bible bears it out uh, that those who live godly will suffer persecution. And, 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 and Paul writes a lot about persecution uh, in his writings and his, in his, uh, his epistles. But uh, right now, the church in the West is cruising in terms of persecution. We aren't, you know, we're not, we're not experiencing it. One of the things that was used during the last presidential election to steer people away from a particular party was that the that the party that wound up being victorious uh, would usher in persecution of the church. Now, I get a little facetious with that, and I say a lot of people think persecution is when your cable goes out. <laughs> right. You know, oh my God, you have to help me now because <laughs> oh, no. I can't get my cable, which means I can't get the plethora of preachers that I need to get <laughs> <Right>. to feed <laughs> me so many different doctrines. Uh, but, you know, when we look at persecution, Obviously, we are not experiencing what our brothers and sisters went through in the first century right. and then up through the third century, uh, being fed to wolves and lions and bears and burned at the stake. In That's fact, right. we're taught from history that Nero used to light the Christians, set them on yes, fire to light his garden parties at yes, night. I agree with you, Pastor Tim. I don't necessarily know if it's going to be to that magnitude before Christ comes back for us. But certainly after the Antichrist takes over yes, and in sure. conjunction with the false prophet, they yes. declare war on the saints of God yes. and they behead the Christians. They do a lot of things. Yes. But today, looking at us in the world in 2021, what are some of the forms of persecution that we could expect as believers? I mean, being realistic, there are going to be some things that we encounter. Oh, yeah. Sure. I yeah. don't know if the abolishment of the name of Christ will ever be a reality until the, the, the church is gone. But some of the things that you envision us going through during this time, what, what do you think they would be? Uh, I think one of the things would be some type of uh, governmental uh, legislation or regulation in terms of how we can worship or who can worship with us or what we can and cannot do during our worship services. I think that's one of the things that I can see playing out in, in the future sometime. Uh, and the other thing too is, um, which is connected to that, is accepting different people uh, in terms of their lifestyles, you know, and uh, making, th making preaching against homosexuality um, a hate crime. You know, I've heard some things uh, about that that's, that's, that may become a reality soon. And so um, when I look at that, some of the, those are some of the things that I believe that, that could be a, a level of or a type of persecution uh, toward the church. Now, that makes sense. It's a very subtle way yes. to shut down some of our abilities to reach the world with Christ. But Pastor Brian, uh, in line with what Pastor Tim just said, uh, I think that one of the areas of persecution will be governmental regulations sure. about certain lifestyles. Yes. So someone comes to you and says, you know, uh, we're, we're homosexual, we want to get married, and we want you to do mm. the ceremony. And the law says, if you don't, because of their lifestyle, then that becomes a hate crime. Absolutely. At that juncture, how does the Christian respond? Now mm. remember, we're, they're not asking yeah. you to deny Christ. Sure. They're asking you to perform a wedding yeah. between two members of the same sex. Yeah. And if you don't, it would be considered a hate crime. Yes. How could the church approach that? Wow, it's uh, a very big question. Um, well, uh, if you're asking me, and you are, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I would not do it personally. And uh, uh, just because of my stand biblically, uh, so I would not unite two people of the same sex uh, in marriage, and I just wouldn't have anything to do with that. Um, lovingly, I would try to have that conversation as best I could, and I, although I don't know if there's a loving way you have that. Um, but to me, my conviction would say that, th that that's kind of where I would draw the line. You know, I, 
I can love you. You can come to church. I, uh, we can do all those great things. But uniting you in, in what I believe is God's holy matrimony and God's institution, to me, would be a perversion of what God originally set in motion. So I would not be able to do that. And, um, and I'm sure that would then probably lend itself to some level of persecution. But can I say this also, Bishop? Uh, we said this maybe a few segments ago that you won't have to sign up for persecution. Mm -hmm. You'll simply have to say no to a certain things that the culture will ask you to do and you will find yourself in persecution. And, and it's just like the early church. Uh, the Caesar says, burn incense unto me. Uh, when you go into different places, burn your incense unto me. By them saying no, it drew them into a persecution. So I, I strongly believe, and I do disagree, I think it's on the horizon, the more things the Christian says no to, we're automatically going to find ourselves in some level of persecution. So now you use come. the burning incense yes. as an example. Yes, and going back to the marriage thing. Yes, sir. Um, we seem to draw the line. Yeah. At, and I think this is across the body of Christ. Yes. We draw the line with same-sex marriage. Yes. And I, I don't think there are too many children of God who would, you know, say, yes, they're going to do it. Right. Um, you know, I think they all say pretty much the same thing. Yeah. But my question that, would, that comes from that would be, would we marry then a believer to an unbeliever? Mm. Uh, I have counseled people not to do that as well. Uh, the unequal, unequally yoked concept is a big deal for me as a pastor. And I've seen people do it, forego it, not listen. And I've seen some, some bad results from that. So I would still encourage people, if they, do not marry an unbeliever because you can find yourself in a whole lot of unnecessary fight, fighting and whole unnecessary conflict. Pastor Tim, how do you approach that? Uh, an unbeliever marrying a believer, uh, that doesn't seem to be the fuel for persecution and uh, uh, have the substance of a hate crime. You, you may have some local persecution um, from, from the individuals that, that you denied that, yeah. um, but I, I would handle it the same way. I've, I've actually had to handle that, and uh, the Bible is clear on being unequally yoked with unbelievers. Yeah. Be, one or two things are going to happen. Uh, either the believer is going to com compromise their lifestyle. Uh, or just totally walk away from the Lord. And it's, it's, just, it's almost, it's just so difficult to bring two lives together where you have two different moral codes. Yeah. And if I'm living uh, from a kingdom perspective and I'm, and I'm expecting an individual who does not have my same moral code to do the same thing, it's difficult. They, and they'll bring them to the church and they'll get, well, they want you to, to minister try. to them and they want yeah. you to try to <laughs> fix them. And, fix and them, it, just, it just doesn't work, you know, it just doesn't work. It's, it's a very difficult uh, road, mm -hmm. road to hoe, it really is, it's, it's, it's tough. So we're really back to the church doing what God requires, yes. as opposed to the culture and the governmental flow. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Now, I think that there's a great scare amongst Christians that we will enter into governmental control. One of the things that was uh, put out amongst churches during the pandemic was that the government was telling the church they could not meet. Yeah. Now, I don't believe the government was telling me that I could not have church. Right. I believe the government was saying, due to the pandemic, we would rather there be no large gatherings so that people don't become infected. Yes. Do you think that was government, the abuse of governmental control, Pastor Brian? I, I don't think it was a direct uh, abuse of control. I think what we're seeing now is a dress rehearsal. I think the whole globe is under dress rehearsal. This is just my personal opinion. I think, you know, somebody's trying to see how it moves, how it works, how fast do we get in line, how fast do we fall out of line. For what purpose are we rehearsing? I, I'm believing all of these things are, are, are gearing towards the end for the believer as far as Christ. I'm not talking about five or ten years or, or, or tomorrow, but down the line what we're seeing is there's a steady progression towards man control governmental control and less of God control. So the only people that are in the way of the world's agenda are Christians. Hmm. We're the only ones that are standing between full-blown legislation of what we believe is morally wrong and those that are just on the opposite side. We're the only ones in the way. And the same issue happened in the first century up until the third. The only ones that was in the way of the emperor's demands were Christians. 
Yes. The picture's uh, looking the same. In, in, in Nero's time, uh, yeah. he was bold enough to even blame the Christians. He blamed them. For economic yes. disaster, yes, did. you know, natural disasters. Natural disaster, there yeah. was uh, the <laughs> flooding of the Tiber River. Absolutely. He said, blame the Christians. Yeah, that's for. right. That's right. Uh, uh, <laughs> but Pastor Tim, let me ask you the same question. Do you think that the government regulations pertaining to COVID and saying that large venues should be uh, temporarily ceased, do you look at that as a form of governmental control over the church, persecution of the church in some degree? Well, I, I don't think it was just a church. I'm, I'm with Pastor Brian. I'm, I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist. Um, hey. <laughs> so I do believe that there are some, some, some greater things behind the scenes that are happening. Yeah. Um, and it was not just the church. The church was part of the process mm -hmm. uh, to see how things would work. Um, and see how, how quickly they could get us to get in line with, with the agendas mm -hmm. uh, that they put in place. Because when you look at the whole thing, we're, we're, at a, we're at a place now, we're a year and a half almost away, and it's almost like a snap of a finger. It's like, okay, tomorrow just we like just go that. right back to, you know, uh, a status quo or yeah. life as usual. And yeah. so, so I think there are some, some, some other things that are happening uh, behind the scenes. We, we thought it was persecution. It was, to me, it was more inconvenience because a lot of people n never stopped having church, you know, mm -hmm. never stopped gathering. And then That's we true. had the advent of social media that allowed us to gather on a different level and mm -hmm. still connect and still preach the gospel. Now, when they say you can't preach the gospel, on air or live, then that's that's persecution. Can I can I just interject? Because very good point, Pastor Tim. Uh, and the key word I think I've been looking at is censorship. You know, the, when a, when a nation begins to censor what's being said, and this, this is America, it's supposed to be you, you can say what you need to say, you can have your opinion, you can do it respectfully, and sometimes you can do it not so respectfully, but it's your opinion. And when that starts to get censored, and in some levels canceled and shut down then what you're seeing is it's not as free as we believed it once was. And, and now we're starting to see that, that ha that's happening more and more. And there are churches, and I believe believers definitely are being censored. I think people that aren't with the agendas are being censored on different levels. And uh, I even look even on Facebook when we do services, you know, now everything's got to be captioned. You know, in my mind, everything's, everything goes someplace. And so, yeah, I, I think... Censorship is what we ought to really be kind of keeping our eye on. Yeah. So. You guys, uh, it, it, it's, it's interesting. Uh, I'm enjoying our conversation. I think, I think when we look at persecution, for some reason, persecution has always uh, been connected with physical death, yes. uh, the shedding of blood. Uh, the writer to the Hebrews said, you know, why are you so upset? You haven't resisted uh, and shedded your blood, you know, that, that you haven't gone through that. So whatever you're going through, just suck it up and move on because you're right. not dying over it. Right. And I kind of feel that way about the church in the 21st mm -hmm. century. You know, the government might say, oh, you can't say Jesus anymore. Well, say it anyway. The yeah. government might say you can't meet to pray. Meet to pray anyway. Yeah. I mean, come on, think about it. You, you, they're not killing you for it. Uh, what are they doing to you? So they take your 501c3 away. So what? So you pay taxes now. Mm -hmm. The same God that provided for you before will provide for you again. Yeah. But I'm not so sure that we, we can say what's happening is persecution, right. uh, um, control. The reason being for me. Now, these, these gentlemen here, you know, they're, they're, they're my opposite in, in many things. Uh, uh, the reason being for me is that the church is doing a good job destroying itself. So we really Let's don't need governmental well. intervention. Yeah. We lack uh, the ability to police ourselves. Yeah. We, we have no internal affairs unit. Yeah. We have no one that says, okay, this person entered into ministry yeah. under the wrong motives. They, they molest women and boys. They steal money. We have no Ouch. system of government. Yeah. So we force the government to step in because we don't police ourselves. Wow. We have no governing board. The office of bishop was first created to make sure that the preachers and the churches were staying in line yeah, with the Spirit of God. Now yeah, it's turned into some big thing where preachers just get a lot of money for going around wearing certain clothes. Yeah. And, and, and to me, <laughs> we really don't need the government to persecute us when we persecute ourselves. Wow. And when Jesus mm. talks about persecution in the world, you will have trouble. Yeah. You will have tribulation. I mean, what's he really talking about? Is it satanic? Is it governmental? 
Uh, what's he talking about? In the world, you will have tribulation. Mm -hmm. What's he talking about, Pastor? I, I, I believe it's both. I believe you're going to have a combination of, you know, personal trouble, personal trials. But I also think at some point, uh, the lead ends are, are very clear to me that at some point, uh, there's going to be more of a hush. Mm -hmm. There's going to be more of a, a line of demarcation. Uh, uh, are you with us or are you not? It ultimately, it's going to come to that. And, and we just kind of see it leading up to it. Right now, there are small things that they're doing. And like you said, 501c3 or shutting it down or censorship, all those things are happening now. Um, but, but persecution or the victory to come through it never started with a mass group of people. Mm -hmm. There were always a few who took a stand. And all it takes is a few. You know, we know some of those early church fathers, Polycarp and those guys, that took a stand and it ignited the fire in the other believers. It gave them the power that they needed, even if the power was to die. Uh, you know, history says it. They, they went through it, but something overcame them. Mm -hmm. And it, we know it was the Spirit of God. Yeah. And, and I believe that at some point we'll be thrust into a period where it will do the separating from the saints and those who are really not. Yeah. Do you think, Pastor Tim, that we can be successful if we're forced underground as our predecessors were wow. in Rome? Do you think that we now have the moxie, the ability, no. the, 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 the stick to itiveness <laughs> wow. to be successful if the government says no more public gatherings for Jesus? Wow. Do you think or have we become so soft that we're almost... Uh, non-existent. Mm. What do you think? Wow. Th there'll be factions on both sides, but when you when you look at the so Southern Hemisphere uh, and the church, they are the fastest growing church in the in the universe, mm -hmm. and they are underground. Asia, mm -hmm. some African uh, countries, mm -hmm. uh, all of those places in the Southern Hemisphere. It's almost like the church in the West is shrinking, yeah. and the churches in, in, in those areas are growing, and they are many of them are underground, and they are thriving. Churches in in uh, Muslim nations that are thriving and growing and underground. Yeah. You know, in the first century when persecution came, uh, the Christians were they. It, it was a sign of honor. It was a yes. bad of was. honor and they were multiplying so much so that the government says okay we have to stop we have to stop persecuting them because they, they continue to grow they just they're, just, they're singing exactly unto right. their death you know That's and right. so I do think you'll find factions on both sides it will be hard-pressed here in America but there is a remnant God yeah. has a remnant of uh, people yeah. who will whether underground or on ground will honor the Lord, Amen. will worship the Lord Jesus Christ, and will, will, will uh, go and be persecuted uh, happily and, and gracefully wow. uh, as unto uh, all of the things to the Lord. And so, so yeah, we'll find people on both sides, but, but here in the West, it'll be a little, we'll be a little bit more hard pressed, but we're seeing those things happen in the Southern Hemisphere of the world. Well, there you have it. <laughs> Persecution is coming. Yes, it is. <laughs> These two it's experts coming. say <laughs> it's on the horizon. It might not be there tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> but they concur that something is developing. Something There's something developing. in the wind that ultimately mm. will be unearthed after the church is gone. Yeah. I agree that the church is the restraining power. The Holy Spirit in the church restrains yes. Antichrist from coming to full positioning. Yes. So trouble is on the horizon. Mm -hmm. Right now, you need to get into the ark. Yes. yes. Right now. Yes. Right now, mm -hmm. you need to say, Jesus, mm -hmm. forgive me for my sins. Yes. And if you are a Christian and you've been a little prodigal and you strayed away because of Western pleasures, mm -hmm. come on back home. Yes. Come to yourself and realize this isn't where I should be. Mm -hmm. I should be in the arms of Jesus. Yes. Something's about to happen. You mm. can feel it in the air. Sure but can. we do know from Scripture the next big event on God's prophetic calendar is the catching away of his saints. <laughs> yes. Now, you need to be in it because we won't be here. There'll be <laughs> no more right. Christian in the culture right. unless you've taped it and you can watch the reruns. <laughs> That's right. There'll be no more live tapings because we will be yeah. gone. Mm. So we're inviting you to wow. join us. Come with us so that you can meet the Lord in the air. It's yeah. a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Yeah. Come into my heart and set me free yes. from ungodliness. And I will serve you all the days of my life. Persecution's coming, but get in 
on the protection of God. Yes. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Will I trust. Thanks for joining wow. us today. Continue to look up because your help comes from the Lord. We love you. We're praying for you. Keep looking to Jesus. The stress of today's culture can cause us to live in a place of fear and anxiety, but Jesus invites us to a place of peace and rest, even in the midst of tragedy. In the Psalm 23 teaching series, Bishop Lambert reminds us that the Good Shepherd watches over our lives and helps us maintain a peaceful existence. Everybody's valley is different. My valley is different than your valley. Your experience is different than mine. When the Bible says God won't put on you more than you can bear, he's not talking about physical. He's talking about emotional, mental. What good is it to say I can handle this, but inside I'm broken down. Receive this eight-part series on CD or DVD with your donation of $35 or more. Visit ericlambertministries.org or call 800-650-9435 to order today. Learn how to conquer your fears through rest in Jesus and the power of God's Word. Praise the Lord. In Romans chapter 12, the Apostle Paul makes a very strong statement to the believers living in a totally ungodly country. He says, do not be conformed to the world, but undergo a transformation by the renewing of your mind. Our greatest conflict does not come from the satanic power because Colossians tells us that Jesus has defeated the devil and stripped him of all of his power. I believe our greatest conflict comes from being conformed to the current culture. We need to change how we view this culture and how we are sent by God to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. I'm Pastor Eric Lambert of Bethel Deliverance International Church and I wanna share with you some exciting news that I've completed the writing to the second edition of the Christian and the culture. It's entitled, Cancel the Culture. This particular book is about 12 chapters long and at the end of each chapter, there is a challenge for each individual believer. When you get this book into your hands, I want you to read each chapter diligently and then perform each challenge at the end of the chapter. So I'm inviting you to purchase your copy of the Christian and the culture, cancel the culture. And God will bless you as you take those steps to divorce yourself from an antichrist culture. I hope to see you in church and I hope to hear from you by email or letter that you've read the book and it has been a blessing to you. May God continue to bless you as you continue to look to him. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. For more information about our media ministry or to partner with us, visit BethelDeliverance.org and go to the media outreach link to make a donation. You can also call 215-885-2585 to speak with a media representative. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.